welcome to you all. This is our circuit service and we share together in praise and worship of God. Today's theme reminds us that it is what we receive from God that truly satisfies. Bread for the body, bread for the soul. Our opening sentences. Come to the living waters, you that have a thirst and cannot quench it, and you that hunger for more from life. Come, you that labour, but find no rest, and you that spend, but are not satisfied. Here, without money, without price, all may enjoy the bread of heaven. God speaks, and all who listen will have life. That is the promise to us all. So let's join together in our first hymn, Charles Wesley's Invitation to Come. Come, sinners, to the Gospel Feast. Jesus, your heart went out to a crowd of 5,000 people when you saw their need. We bring to you today our hunger, our longing for healing, a yearning to understand the scripture and to hear you speak to us. Meet us in our homes and the places we worship. Embrace us, 
receive our praise and the best of all we can offer. Strengthen us individually and together that we might reflect your compassion, reaching out to those places and those people who are hurting and sad and lonely. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Good morning. This morning's Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 9. Invitation to the Thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, and come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has, he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Glorious God, your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are your ways our ways. You look at the ugliest soul and see unstirred the wings of an angel. We scan the finest of our neighbours, anxious to find flaws. You see our lives in the context of eternity and make a time for waiting, for yearning, for putting all things in proportion. We demand instant results and look for tomorrow before savouring today. You know that only one who suffers can ultimately save, so you choose to walk the way of the cross. We feel judged and threatened by that love, which risks all for all. Your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are your ways our ways. So in silence, we confess the times when we have failed you, others and ourselves. Not to have our worst confirmed but to have our best liberated. We pray for your grace and your pardon. Forgive us, Lord, in what has gone wrong. Repair in us what is wasted. Reveal in us what is good. And nourish us with better food than we could ever purchase. Your word, your love, your interest your daily bread for our life's journey, in the company of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I am making all things new, says the Lord. Jesus has assured us, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Our reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Let us listen to the word of God. Jesus feeds 5,000. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. And it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, Jesus said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day. In addition to all of this, women and children. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be here today. We thank you because you have guided and saved us up until this time. And here we are in your presence, sharing your word. So Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our help and our redeemer. 
Amen. Today's gospel reading has some interesting stories in them, don't they? Matthew chapter 14 is always very interesting for me to read. Because if you read and you reflect on them, there are so many things, stories, you can actually use within it to shape your life. So starting from the beginning, when Jesus, when Jesus, um, when John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod and Herodias. And shortly after that, Jesus heard about that and he went into a solitary place and his disciple came, disciples came to him and he fed the 5,000. Shortly after that, he walked on water. Have you ever seen anyone walk on water? Jesus is the man. So now let's take ourselves back to the story of today, which is in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, where Jesus fed 5,000 men. So let us try and make sense of ourselves in that situation. Have you ever had an unplanned or unexpected visitor dropping in on you, just saying, oh, I just called to say hi? And you have nothing to offer them. No food, no water, nothing. Have you ever wanted food but realized that you had none? And then, you know, you have nowhere to turn to. Or is it the fact that you had a little? And just as you were about to eat the little, a friend turned up. And you have to share your little food with that friend. Well, we've all been in those situations, if not all, one of those. And they, they're not funny at all. Because when it comes to food, food is very important. So in the chapter preceding Matthew 14, 13 to 21, Jesus just heard about the beheading of John the Baptist. John was Jesus' cousin. So that death was very, very personal for him. He went into solitary place for a bit of time alone and quietness to grieve for his cousin. As human beings, when we lose our beloved ones, we need time to grieve for them. People grieve differently. Some people go cut out themselves out from everyone some people celebrate the person's life. Some people talk about the person. But Jesus felt it was important for him to grieve about John. But as a compassionate man, he knew he couldn't dwell on that forever. So he decided to start to continue his mission. He's got work to do. People are now flocking to him. They sought him and they followed him. They've brought the sick, they brought the lame to him. They knew he can heal their illnesses because the man has made the lame to walk. He has made the deaf to hear and he has made the blind to see. He performed many miracles as signs of his identity. He used other miracles to teach important truths. And some miracles, he healed people because he felt compassion for them. So three reading contexts help us to identify the significance of Jesus' actions involving abundant food. Firstly, the recognition that the world is in the, during the first century, during Roman Empire, the world had significant inequalities concerning access to food. Many people knew food insecurity and struggled on a daily basis for adequate food and nutrition. Because the Roman Empire was very hierarchical in its social structure. Very small group of ruling elites who enjoyed abundant variety of good food and wine. 
but most of the population in the community, local community, they lived around or at or below subsistence level with inadequate nutritional intake. So if you remember, the Lord's Prayer was set during Jesus' time. In fact, Jesus taught us how to say the Lord's Prayer. And there's a line in it that says, Give us each day our daily bread. This is why that prayer is very important, even so in Roman Empire time. Because though sometimes people don't know where their daily bread will come from, and the prayer is very important for them. Food access reflected the elite's access to power that controlled resources. The lack of food was one of the ways many people experienced injustice in the disparity of power. So there was prevalent diseases due to deprivation because of inadequate nutrition, the diseases due to con contagious due to, because of inadequate immunity. All of these were rife during the Roman time. Secondly, the biblical traditional explicitly identifies God's will that hungry people be fed. If you look in Exodus, God gave manna when the Israelites were hungry. Pro Ezekiel condemns Israel's leaders for failing to feed the people in Ezekiel 34, 1-10. So, Prophet Isaiah even told us about God's declaration and his will that people should share their bread with the hungry. So I'm going to pause for a minute there and ask you a question. Who have you shared your bread with? Especially during this COVID period. Who have you given, reached out to? Who have you given arms to? Because at this point in time, we should recognize our needs more than never. And recognizing it, even now, means that we do that going forward. Because in Matthew chapter 6, verses 2 to 4, Jesus endorses the merciful practice of alms given. But he advised us to give alms in a very, in a very, very um, secret way. In a way that people don't know that you are giving alms. Be giving with decorum. Don't be public about it. He defends the practice of procuring food as a way of honoring the Sabbath. He also declared that the nations will be judged in part on whether they have provided food for the hungry or not. So thirdly, traditions concerned with the establishment of Jesus' empire in all its fullness shows the coming age in terms of abundant food and feasting for all. So Jesus' actions in Matthew 14, 13 to 21 highlights and confronts this injustice of the Roman world with an inaction that enacts God's will to feed hungry people. So when when the crowd joined Jesus in this deserted place, Jesus' initial reaction and his immediate reaction was that of compassion. Compassionate power that expressed healing. The disciples approached him and told him that, oh, this place is a deserted place. Can you send people out to the, to the town to go and buy food? But Jesus countermands them with a challenge for the disciples to feed the crowd. So the disciples came with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus took control and he holds the meal. He blesses the food and gave it to the disciples to distribute to the crowd. This is not a last supper, but this food and the Last Supper could be linked 
due to the dispersal of divine blessing. Jesus enacts God's will that hungry people should be fed. He anticipates the abundant blessing of good food described by Israel, Ezekiel and Isaiah. So not only is the crowd of 5,000 men plus women and children were fed, there were leftovers. They had 12 basket full. Jesus demonstrates his lordship over these food resources, just as he demonstrates his authority over disease, sin, sabbath, people's lives, and the sea. Jesus was and still is a loving man. He is loving, caring, and feeling person. When you are suffering, remember that Jesus is suffering with you. He has got compassion for you. He has all the time for you. Also, wherever Jesus was, there was food because he genuinely cared for his people. So my brothers and sisters, what are you going through today? Is it lack of job? Because, hence, you've got no income. Is it lack of friends, so you feel lonely or isolated? Is it lack of food, then you are hungry? Or is it lack of happiness, so you are very sad? Or is it lack of spiritual food, so you are, you are low, you are down on your knees? Well, rejoice, because I'm, I'm, I'm here with the good news. And the good news is that you are not alone, because Jesus is with you. And it will see you through anything you are going through. All you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. When Jesus fed 5,000 men and women and children, he was originally given food that looked insufficient. He had five loaves of bread and two fishes, but he multiplied it. In our times, we often feel that when we offer whatever we offer God is too small. In fact, I've had people say, oh, I've only got coins on me, so I can't give this to the church. But guess what? God has a way of multiplying whatever we give to abundant. Whether it's our talent, it's our time or treasure, it is when we dedicate them and offer them to Jesus that they be become abundant. So the scripture recorded 5,000 men, that 5,000 men were fed. I have to say, in case you are wondering, 5,000 men were recorded because in Jewish culture, men and women do not eat together in those days. So children eat with women. Therefore, the number of those felt could be even more than 5,000, could be up to 10 to 15,000. So my question to you, my brother and sister, is how are you using your wealth? Are you feeding the hungry? Are you giving hands? This is a period when we should reach out to each other. In During this COVID-19, I know of many groups that give palliative to friends, to family, to Christian sisters and brothers, I want to admonish us not to stop now. We should continue because God of hosts is the one that allow us to give and we should continue to give. Because as Christians, we need to give because Christ said, when you do this, when you feed this person, you are feeding me. So when you do this, you are doing this to me. I pray that the Lord of hosts will grant us the grace to be able to give and the grace to be able to bless him always with everything we need, including our talent, our time, and our money. Amen.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. We turn now to our prayers of intercession. And in these prayers, there's a response. So when I say, let us pray for the hungry and the fed, would you please respond, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hunger in this land, whose only kitchen is a soup kitchen, whose only food is what others don't want, whose diet depends on luck, not planning. Lord, feed your people using our skills and conscience and eradicate from our politics and our private lives the apathy to hunger that comes from overeating. Let us pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the hungry in other lands where economies are burdened by debt and cannot respond to human need. Or where fields are farmed for our benefit by low-waged workers courted by starvation. Lord, feed your people. Even if rulers must cancel debt and shareholders lose profit, or diners restrict their choice in order that all may be nourished. Let us pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the hungry for justice, who document inequalities 
who demonstrate against tyranny, distinguish between need and greed, and are sometimes misrepresented or persecuted in the process. Lord, may their labour not be in vain, and may we be counted in their number. Let us pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. So, in the presence of the bread of life, who refused food for himself in order to nourish others, we deepen our devotion by praying together in his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you wherever you are. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. So as we near to the end of our service, a prayer of blessing. Please join together in the responses. Now may God who gives seed to the sower and corn to the reaper, give to us all that is needed to produce a good harvest. We say together, may God make us fertile in faith love and goodness, 
and take us out with joy and lead us on in peace as signs of the fruitfulness of heaven. Amen. So go now in peace. Mm -hmm.